Happy New Year! This is the final video in the Iron Man visual effects tutorial series that I've been doing over the last few weeks. I've got some new toys over Christmas. I've got a new webcam. This is a Logitech C920, so hopefully you will be able to see me in much better detail. I also got a massive softbox umbrella light, which is over there just off camera. I'll put a photo up now so you can see what it looks like. It's huge and it's really, really bright and it makes everything look really nice. I hope you all had a lovely Christmas. Let's hope that 2021 is better than 2020. Having said that though, 2020 was a really good year for my YouTube channel. So thank you very much for all of the support last year. It's been fantastic. So today we're gonna to composite some of the renders that we've done in the last five videos. Let's go. Okay, so this is the shot that I've chosen to do the comp example on for this video. For me, this shot in the film is one of the ones that always stood out to me as being very memorable. I've got a couple of really cool tricks that I'd like to show in this video. One of them is a very advanced compositing technique, and another one is an object tracking technique, which I'll touch on very briefly. So this is the scene in Blender. Obviously, uh, if I turn off the background image, you can see all of this stuff is the CG. So we've got the suit, which is object tracked to my body. And then the two arms come in and place the two separate pieces of the arms onto my arm. So the object tracking technique is something I discovered when I watched a video by a guy called Sean Kennedy. In his video he was talking about object tracking and how you can just use one track to link it to an empty and parent stuff to that in 3D space. So for example here I chose to track my tattoo just because it's basically the perfect tracking marker and you just do one single track so I tracked it for the length of the shot and then what you do is you go to the solve tab and under geometry you press link empty to track then you go back to the 3D viewport. This makes an empty which is placed randomly in 3D space. It's locked to the camera's perspective so if you press G and try and move your mouse it can only go further away or closer to the camera. So if I get it lined up with where all of my other stuff is in 3D space and scale it down a bit, this empty will now move with my arm. So it basically works as like a single point object track. So because the arms are rigged with an IK system, I added an object constraint onto that bone, which is a child of, and this is basically parenting it. And for the target, I set it to be the empty. And what this does is attaches the main IK bone on the arm that does all the movement to the empty. So now when the empty moves, the IK system will move with it. It's a really simple way of doing the tracking and it worked really well. So anyway, let's get out of Blender because this is a compositing video. Theoretically, now you should have rendered everything if you followed the lighting and rendering video, which was the last one. So this is the new script in its entirety. As you can see, not too many nodes, not massively overwhelming. We've got the CG over here. Uh, this is the setup for the holdout that uses some of the 3D geometry here. And then we've got some uh, lens flares and glows and stuff coming from the arc reactor finally down here. So we've got the original footage here, and then we have the render of the suit and the utilities pass, which has all of the different cryptomats and stuff in it. The first step is obviously to put the CG over the background. So I'm just gonna add a merge and do that. That's what it looks like by default. As you can see, the suit doesn't line up with my body and that's because we rendered the CG with some overscan. So I need to apply the lens distortion to this to get it to line up correctly. The way to do this is add a reformat node, set the resize type to none and turn on preserve bounding box, which will give you the overscan and the suit will appear in the correct place on my body. And then you just have to apply the lens distortion, which I can grab from my lens distortion setup over here paste it under the reformat node, and then just invert it so it's distorting instead of undistorting. Then the next step is to start doing some grading. And if I turn the gamma right up, you can see the black points are a little bit funky on the suit. The CG has a few areas that are much, much darker than the background. So one of the important things to do is to get that to match. First of all, I'm gonna add an unpremolt and then a premolt node lower down. Then I'm gonna add a copy node and copy the alpha from the actual original render back in later on. And then all of our grade nodes are gonna go in between these two nodes. And then basically once all the grading is done, it's gonna make sure that the edges are the same as how it started. So first things first, I'm gonna add a grade node and I'm gonna crank up the black point until the CG has a similar black level to the rest of the footage. Something like that looks pretty good. I'm looking at the dark levels in my wardrobe over here and some of the stuff on my coat and the bag, and then just trying to get those levels to be kind of in the same place. Then I can reset the gamma so it looks normal. I can also see when I crank the gamma up that the suit goes very sort of pinky purple. It's obviously meant to be more of a harsh red so I think we need to take some of the pink out of that and make it a bit warmer maybe. So to do that I'm going to use the cryptomats. I'm going to add a cryptomat node. I'm going to set it to material so I can isolate the red material on the suit and then with the color picker I can grab all of the sections that are red and then what I can do is add a color correct node or a grade node and use the mask input, plug that into the cryptomat node, which gives us the alpha. And using that alpha means that my changes in the color correct will only affect the red areas of the suit. So like I said, if I gamma up, the suit looks very pink. So I'm probably gonna try and make that a little bit less crazy. Take some blue out maybe, make it a little bit more green. And there we go. You can see the difference there immediately. The next thing I did is add a glow onto the arc reactor. A fun way of doing this is you can just shuffle out the emission pass. 
So this will isolate just the parts of the material that were emissive. And then I can add a glow onto this. So I'm gonna add an exponential glow. I'm gonna make it a pretty soft and subtle glow. This is obviously a daytime scene, so there wouldn't be like a massive blooming glow like if it was nighttime. I'm gonna add a grade node onto this and just add a bit of blue into the gamma, which will make the kind of darker areas of the glow a bit more blue. Just give it a little bit of color like that. And then I'm gonna plus this over the top of the suit. Ah, yes, it needs the lens distortion applied to it, otherwise it's in the wrong place. So what I can actually do, instead of doing all the lens distortion again, is just shuffle it out after all the lens distortion is applied, and that will then take it from the bottom of the stream of the CG and then apply the effects on top. So now, as you can see, that lines up nicely. Might turn the mix down a little bit just so it's not quite so strong. And that's the before and after, nice and subtle. I also couldn't resist doing a slight anamorphic flare going sideways across here. I'm working on a car commercial at work at the moment and uh, one of the guys at work had a setup for the flares that was perfect for this, so I borrowed it. It basically just isolates the highlights and then it adds a load of different increments of horizontal blurring. So as you can see, each one gets slightly wider and then they all get plus together and you end up with this really cool kind of horizontal flare. You don't really have to go that advanced with it. You can just do a few different blurs. Then what you can do is select all of them, hit M, which will make a merge node, change the operation to plus and as you can see, this makes a really cool kind of amalgamation of all of them. Then what I can do is grab the grade node from the glow, put it on here so it's the same sort of color, and then I can plus this over the top of the scene as well. Set this to plus, and then we have the flare, and then obviously I wanna turn this right down so it's not quite so mental. The highlights are a little bit strong, so I'm gonna add a blur onto this just to make them a little bit less defined. Something like that looks pretty good. So in a nutshell, if you spend a little bit more time doing the color correction and stuff, that's how you get the CG into a good place. Now we can talk about that really cool advanced compositing technique that I discovered earlier. There's a problem with the suit how it is at the moment. You can see my arm is supposed to be going into the suit, which means it should kind of come in here and then be cut off by the foreground bit of the suit. Whereas currently, because this is just a 2D layer that's slapped on top of the footage of me, even the bits of the suit that are meant to be behind me are currently appearing on top. You can't do this in 2D because it's not a 3D model anymore. It's just like a flat photo. However, recently I was watching a Hugo's desk video Video about using geometry for masks in Nuke. In his example, he was using some geometry to put a, a smoke element in between two different bits of the CG. And then in my head, a little light bulb went off and I thought, hang on a second, what if I can take that and project some of the roto in 3D space? And then if I place it literally inside, it will appear that my arm is kind of in front of this bit and behind this bit. And so that's exactly what I did. So if I go into 3D space, you can see that this is the geo of the armor. And then I have some cards that I placed inside the armor, basically where my body is supposed to be. So then if you run that through a scanline render in Nuke and then apply the lens distortion onto it, it gives you an alpha for the suit or basically an inverted alpha that works as a holdout. So then for example, I have my rotor of my body here and then I can use this alpha as a mask to say, the roto can go where the white bits are and then use the black foreground elements of the CG to cut it off, which looks something like this. So then when this gets put over the top of the footage, you can see that my arm is correctly placed in 3D space inside the suit. In the last video, I just drew masks for this manually and it was a bit of a tedious process. This is much better because it actually does it in 3D space, which looks more realistic. So how do you actually do this? First things first, jump back into Blender. What you wanna do when you're in the scene is go to File, Export, and Alembic. An Alembic is a really good 3D file format that can go between kind of all software, it's quite universal. And the important thing about Alembics is they have animation data. So unlike an OBJ that's just still, Alembics will actually have all of the movement of the rig and the pieces of the geo will be moving when I bring it into Nuke. So what you wanna do is go into your scene file. I just saved it in my geometry folder. And then importantly, you need to make sure you tick Flatten Hierarchy. And this means that it will correctly transfer all of the parenting. So for example, in Blender where I have the child of constraints that make the bits of the armor follow the arm, when I didn't tick this originally, when I bought it into Nuke, the piece of the Iron Man suit were naturally connected to the robotic arms. And then you just press export Alembic and then you can jump back into Nuke and search for read geo. And then you can locate the geometry in your shot folder. So shot five, and then it will give you a list of all of the different elements in your shot. All you have to do is click create all in one node. And this will give you a node for the geometry, which looks like this. And it will also give you your camera, which is really important as well. I'm just gonna steal all of the roto so I'd have to do it again for this tutorial. So let's just imagine that you've done all your roto as well. So with the geometry, what you want to do is put a fill matte shader on it. A fill matte is basically just a complete black shade that works like a holdout. So search for fill matte and plug the image input into the fill matte shader. And as you can see, it's turned black. Then what you want to do is play some cards in 3D space inside of the suit. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna borrow the one that I've already done. So I've got three cards that are kind of placed in the arm 
for where the head goes whoops and uh, where the other arm goes and plug all of these into a scene and then you also want to plug the geometry node into that with your scene geo so grab the output here for the fourth output and plug that into the read geo and then if you add a scanline render node plug the 3d input into the scene and then plug your camera input into your camera obviously now if i look at this through the scanline render this is how you get the alpha for the holdout it's important to remember that the blender renders are currently over scanned and undistorted so to get the holdout to match this also has to be the overscan resolution so if i add a reformat node i can set the output format to be the resolution of my undistorted renders which is 2001 by 1126 and then you plug the background from the scanline render into that and this will basically change the resolution of the scanline render to be the undistorted res and then from here applying the lens distortion is the same process as it is to the cg because they're the same size so we can grab the lens distortion setup from here copy and paste it under the scanline render and a good way to check that this works is just merging it over the cg to make sure it looks the same and as you can see they line up perfectly so now the scanline render is outputting this holdout alpha what you want to do is use this as a mask over the roto so this is the roto that i've done in 2d then if i add a merge node and plug the a input into the 3d holdout and set the operation to be mask this will now act like a holdout and cut out the 3d geo from the 2d roto as you can see there's a couple of little problems where some of the pixels are just coming through from a holdout that's probably a little gap in the geometry in 3d so what i did i think is just add a slight erode and then just crank it up until you get rid of those pixels and that will sort that problem out so then what you do with this is you merge this on top of the main stream after the cg so we start off with just the footage then the cg goes on here and then you merge this new roto on top of all of that which looks like this as you can see, you get some pretty gross black edges from the holdout. That's because there's no anti-aliasing coming through the scanline render in Nuke. So just add a blur node onto the holdout and just turn it up a little bit and that kind of fixes that problem and then finally what you want to do is add some contact shadows from the suit the best way to do this is to do it completely in cg and have kind of a 3d model of you under the suit that will be a shadow catcher but to get the model to kind of perfectly line up with your body is quite a lot of work and i just didn't really fancy doing that so i faked the shadows in 2d just by doing a kind of rotor shape so this is the shadow setup over here and if i turn these on you can see i've just drawn some masks for the different sections where the shadow should be and i just went through and animated the masks to move with the different pieces of the suit so for example here where the contact shadow is supposed to be coming from the arm i just kind of moved the roto shape with the arm and it looks pretty good so the way to do this is make some rotor shapes for all the different areas you want to be in shadow and then what you could do is just use a grade node and use the alpha from the roto to grade down the footage or what i like to do for shadows is make a separate version of the plate that is essentially in shadow and that looks something like this and what i've done here is i've turned the contrast right down and also turned the gain down and then what i do is use a key mix node which basically is the same as a merge but it works with a separate input for the alpha so you plug the b input into the original plates or in this case the roto the a input goes into the new shadow version that you've made and then you use the mask input as the roto which looks like this and what it's saying is wherever the roto shapes are turn those areas into the areas that are in shadow and then i use the original alpha of the roto with the holdout on it as a mask which cuts it out and basically applies the shadows onto those areas but still has the holdout it's important to use this mask because we're putting this on top of the cg so you don't want the shadows to appear on top of the cg suit so make sure you're cutting out the holdout from the alpha for the shadows so after all that's done that should look something like this you can go into as much detail as you like with the cryptomats and go to town on like getting all the colors and stuff balanced and eventually it should look something like this i'm still working on this shot it's not fully comped yet i just got it up to a level where i could show you for the tutorial so there we go that's how you do the compositing i hope you guys have really enjoyed this six part series it was quite a lot of work but it seems to have had a really good response from everyone so i'm glad it's going down well next week i'm releasing the actual finished iron man video which i'm working on at the moment i've done about 75 percent of it now and i've finished all of the most complex cg shots it's so much better than the original one there's a lot of really cool kind of 3d camera move stuff that i've done this time that's quite exciting so thank you very much for watching these tutorials i hope you guys have found them useful a lot of people ask for them so i'm really glad i could get it out there keep your eyes peeled next monday for the finished iron man video and then yeah i guess let's see where 2021 goes after that that. Thanks for watching. See you soon.